All right, let's bring in tonight's Legal Eagles National Security Attorney Brad Moss, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General John Yu, and former FBI Assistant Director Mark Morgan. Great to have all of you with us tonight. Hey, Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Okay, John, I'll start with you. Uh, what do you make of this talk of subpoenaing either the special counsel, Robert Mueller, the attorney general, uh, the underlying documents as a way to try to get to this? I mean, the president, as the head of the executive branch, conceivably could tell the DOJ not to comply. Then what? Uh, first, I don't think that Congress is going to be able to do that because, as you just mentioned, the president has the right of executive privilege. Uh, executive privilege usually extends to prosecutorial decisions, particularly from someone like the special counsel. Uh, this would be the kind of fight President Trump would love to have with Congress. Uh, second, I think instead what will happen is I think Attorney General Barr will probably release the report in full, uh, and that will probably take the steam out of this uh, train to try to say, let's get Mueller up here, let's attack Mueller, let's question his decisions. Mueller is really the gold standard among federal prosecutors. Both liberals and, uh, and I, I, both liberals agree with that. And I think Trump made a mistake attacking that Mueller. It's, it's not it, worth it, but uh, let there be no. Go ahead, John. Uh, so I think that I think that Mueller uh, did his job. I think people are not in the end going to question his prosecutorial, prosecutorial decisions. Instead, what's going to happen is that the the House and the Senate have to take up their own constitutional responsibilities, which is conducting oversight and maybe starting impeachment proceedings. But that's a different standard. Mm -hmm than what Mr. Mueller has been asking about, which is whether crimes occurred. Yeah, and, the, and Bradley, to that point, I mean, it is a very different standard because if you're going to indict someone or put together a prosecution or say that it's possible, that's different than putting together an impeachment case. And clearly, uh, with the Democrats pressing so hard to see all the underlying documentation, is that what this is about? If indeed it turns out that there's not a further indictment request or the absolute link of collusion for the president, um, do they want all this material simply so they can build an impeachment case? Well, I think that has to be certainly part of it. I mean, look, their presumed impeachment probe is going to be multifaceted. There's going to be whatever comes out of this Mueller report, whatever we get the details on with respect to the president's particular involvement, whatever it was or was not. They also have their separate probes in the president's businesses. But you can't forget that there's an ongoing investigation in the Southern District of New York in which the president's already been implicated at least once when Michael Cohen pled guilty. He is individual one. He directed the criminal conspiracy to which Michael Cohen pled guilty guilty with respect to hush money payments. So these are all different aspects that Congress, particularly the House, is going to be looking into. They need to build a body of evidence. I think Nancy Pelosi has mentioned this, Congressman Nadler, several mm -hmm. others. If they're going to pursue that route, they have to persuade the American public that there's some legitimacy to this. They can't do it off fragmented information alone. They've got to have the entire body of evidence. All right, Mark, your initial comments and thoughts on the uh, investigation and where it stands now. Yeah, you know, first of all, I want to comment on what John said. I, I, I worked for Director Mueller for his entire 12 years. They served as the director. And in my entire time, I never saw anything that would indicate for me to question his integrity, character, or his investigative ability. The other thing I will say, and Shannon, you talked about it earlier today, is that the statute that we're now under, 28 uh, CFR 600, it's very clear. It's purposefully limiting on both what is required from uh, uh, the special counsel Mueller as well as the attorney general. And they're from a law enforcement perspective, not a political perspective. That's where I come from, is that I actually hope that the report is not released in full. First of all, there's, there's specific prohibitions at 6E grand jury material mm -hmm. that people need to know. The other thing is, is that there's sources and methods that I hope they protect, as well as those legitimate privacy concerns. If somebody comes up and assisted this investigation, and then that their name and everything that they provided is open to the American people, that's going to damage them and it's going to put chilling effect on further investigations. There are absolutely legitimate concerns for not discussing people who are not indicted. Jim, Jim Comey made a mistake in July 2016 doing the same thing. I hope the attorney general thinks about that as well. All right. As you know, that is very different uh, this time around than years ago when we had independent counsel like Kenneth Starr. And we'll talk more about that. So legal panel, stick around. Thank you guys very much. We'll come back to you.